Let's just have a moment of prayer. <clears throat> Y'all had my old voice going to get right in a minute. But uh, Father God, we thank you tonight, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to come out once again, oh Lord, to be able to be around the saints, God. We just want to tell you, thank you, God. All in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you for being who you are. You are our God, Father. You are our Savior. You are our Creator. You are our Deliverer, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. You made us, Lord. Oh, just for yourself, Lord God. Oh, God, we got minds of our own at times, but you made us for yourself, Lord, to be able to praise you, Lord, and, and just sing hallelujah to you, you know, in the name of Jesus. But this is a night that you gave us, Lord, and God, the word to go out tonight, Lord, and let it bless. Let it bless, Lord, the one that receive it, Lord, the one that, oh, God, take it and put it, make it a part of their life, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we honor you, Lord. We honor you. And we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Oh, my God, my God. You know God just good. Y'all, yeah, God is just good. I, while I'm talking a little bit, y'all can go ahead and turn over to Romans 8, 8 chapter of Romans while I'm talking a little bit. And, you know, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just thankful, y'all. When I, when I think of what God has done for me, when I think of it, you know, because, you know, if it was left up to man, I believe I'd have been gone. You know, you get what I'm saying? If it was left up to man, but I'm so glad that I got a God. You got a God. <laughs> that can't nobody do you no harm. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do you no harm. And I'm just thankful tonight. I'm, I, I'm just thankful. I, I, I was talking uh, to the other day with, with one of my, with my brother, matter of fact, and we was talking about, talking about the word. We was talking about the spirit, what we was talking about. And the topic came up, and this is going to be part of the lesson tonight. And the topic came up that everything got a spirit. Do y'all believe that? That everything got a spirit? Everything's got a spirit. Matter of fact, he, he, he told, told us about the most spirit. I don't hatred and envy and jealous and that bitterness and hatred and rage and anger. He told us about all that, right? He told us about everything got a spirit. Now, if you, I'm, 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 I'm making it real simple for you. Anybody in here ever, ever was, a, was a, well, I won't even ask that question. <laughs> Everybody just drank liquor. Just drunk, I'm going to say liquor. Anybody just drunk liquor, know somebody that drunk liquor. Long as that cap stayed on that ball and he didn't screw it off, he didn't let that spirit out. But the minute he took that cap off that and turned it up, he put that old spirit in him. Amen? So that liquor got a spirit. It's got a spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? Everything has got a spirit. It's a spirit of lying, a spirit of deceiving, the spirit of covenants. Everything got a spirit. Even the ones that go out and, and, and mess up on the spouses, there's a spirit. But you know what? I'm glad tonight to know that I got a right spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you have a right spirit? See, there's something about that right spirit. That right spirit has got a yearning and a thirst for God, the right spirit. And the right spirit is not going to let you just do anything. Do you hear me now? It's not going to, if you get off track, it's going to talk to you. That right spirit. And with me saying that, I'm, 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 I'm a, with me saying that, Y'all, if I I'm feel like I'm wanting to push it a little bit, but but I just want to slow it down a little bit. Because we ain't going to be here long now, because it don't take long. Amen? So now, uh, we're going to do uh, a chapter. I don't even have my regular Bible. So we're going to read it together, okay? 
the eighth chapter, the thirty fifth and the thirty sixth verse. If we can, I think I might be got it wrote somewhere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all got it? Huh? Well, let's read it then. Read it so I can hear it, because I only got mine to, to read it up here. Th 36. Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got 35 and 36, right? All right. But hit the word, the main topic of that is we said we will let nothing separate us from the love of God. That's what we say. But I'm so glad tonight that it don't matter what we do or where we find ourselves at, God's love never turns away from us. God's love never turn away from us. And if we love something, if we love like, if we love him like he love us, my God, when you love something, you ain't gonna, you gonna do your best. I, I would go, I would say things, some things do happen, okay? Some things do happen, but if you love something or you love somebody, you ain't going to do nothing to hurt them, is you? Come on, y'all talk to me now. You ain't going to do nothing to hurt them. But that's how, how God is. That's how he is. When you love God, you love God. But you say you won't let nothing. I said. Do you understand? I said, I say I won't let nothing separate me from the love of God. But see, when I say that, let me tell you something. When I say that, I better have the right spirit in me. Do you hear what I'm saying now? Because there's something out of life or in life that will cause you. Matter of fact, when we pray, we say that, we say that line that, that said, Lord, forgive me for the seen and the unseen. Huh? So that's telling me the, the enemy is always, he always around. And he want to catch you. He want to catch you. And when he catch you, if you don't be careful, you'll, you'll start distancing yourself. Huh? You start distancing yourself. And for a good example, can I use me? Can I talk about me? I talk about me. Cause I, I look that high thing, but I'm going to talk about me. I know I love God. I know his spirit dwells in me. Amen? I know that. But there's things out of life. If you get caught up in it, if you get caught up in it, it'll make you Back down from where you is. I'm just going to use the word back down. But what it does, it make you less. You will you bring on a, 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 de uh, a degress instead of progress. Aggressiveness. But myself, I'm, gonna, I'm going on with this. Myself, anytime the things get to go on in my life and they overwhelm me, do you hear me? When they overwhelm me, if I don't be careful, and I, so I'm so, the Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I ain't what I used to be. And I don't do what I used to do. I'm thankful. But there was a time, there was a time when, that's, when, when the spirit, when things be going on in my life, I find myself not praying much as I ought to. I find myself 
where I was reading, setting up every morning, getting up three or four o'clock in the morning, I find myself, instead of getting up to get the Bible, I get up and get the moat control. Hallelujah. I get the moat control. And, and it's something about that right spirit. You, you feel it when, you, when it's trying to get away from you because you don't feel the same. You feel like you ain't worthy, but you're worthy because he made you worthy. But you feel like you were, I keep saying we, but I was talking about me. <laughs> Amen. But I get the feeling these ways. I got the feeling these ways. But then I have to remember that he loves me. Not only did he love me, but he gave me some words that I could talk back to him to be, to, to, to be able to save myself or to draw and pull me back. Lord, when I get overwhelmed, take me to where? To that rock that's hiding me. Huh? When I get overwhelmed. But see, all I'm trying to say, when we say, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. Think about it. We're all going to make mistakes now. Don't think you ain't going to make them now. We're going to make mistakes. But he want us to let nothing come between us and him. Sometimes you get up, you can get angry. You can get bitter. You can talk ways you shouldn't be talking. Because I know I ain't talking to none of y'all. I'm just talking by myself here now. And you get to talking stuff you ain't got no business talking. You get to going places you ain't got no business going. And ain't nothing wrong with going anywhere, but you got to know when the Holy Spirit tells you to move, you got to move. You can't sit there and keep on because direct is one thing I learned out of life. If you don't do something for them, in other words, if you don't draw them, they're going to draw you. Amen? But when you know where your strength comes from, hallelujah. See, because he made us what? He made us overcomers. Or whatever we're going through in life, he made us an overcomer. The battle done been won because if we are listening to the right spirit, God already got the battle strategy. He already got it. If you will listen to what the words say, we already, he, matter of fact, the words say he's already won. We already got the victory. We got it. But for some reason, some reason, and I guess that's, that may be a part of life. I don't know it all. I don't know it all. But I know who know it all. Amen? And he told me anything that I wanted to know, all I had to do was ask. And he went, and he went even further than that. He said, if you want to know, he said, keep my word before your eyes. Plant that word in your heart. Whatever you want to know, because the issues of life are where at? In his word. Ain't nothing none of us can think of. Our minds are not even that big. That we could think of that God ain't already took care of. Ain't that something? No matter how bad it is, no matter how high it is, how low it is, how wide it is, God know all about it. He set this, he set this thing up way back down before, before I was even in my mother's womb. He'd already done set this up. That's powerful, God. That's powerful. And just to know each one of us, he already had them predestinated our life. All of it set out, laid out. The trials and the tribulation we go through, God already know it. He already know it. Don't matter how bad it is. Oh, you think, you think, you think. I know when you lose someone, it hurts. I know when, you, when things go wrong. When you're sick, you don't, when you're sick, you don't want, all you want to do is get well. You don't, you don't, you don't nothing else matters. When you get sick, nothing matters. Your money don't mean nothing to you when you're sick. Do anybody believe that today? It don't mean nothing. Your car don't mean nothing to you when you're sick. Well, Ella, how you, how, how you know that? I've been there. All I want to do is get well. 
I wanted to live and I didn't want to die. So all of this, all of this, God, I, I, it, it amazes me how a scoundrel like me, or like I was, thank you, Jesus, like I was, would be up here talking about his goodness. And you know that even the better part about that, he knew what I was going to be talking about when I was up here. Do y'all believe that? He had it laid out. So if he got it laid out, it's already laid out, and everything already fixed, then what's the problem? What's the problem? Oh, can't get into everybody want to get quiet now. What's the problem? We know how he is because we love him. We believe everything that he says. We believe. And he said the only way you can you that that uh, you can serve him and do right, you gotta have faith in him. Ain't that what he said? That's what he said. You gotta have faith in him. So we believe there's nothing too hard for God. We believe that all things are possible. Amen? We believe that. So he got all that laid out for us. But when the wind began to blow and the thunder began to roll and the rain began to fall. Come on, somebody. When it began to fall, we got to make sure that we love God with all our heart. Because it's going to take him. Because one thing that I know, don't care what come at you or what come at me, it don't matter what come, God got control of it. He got control of it, no matter what come. If it come, God got it. He say, I'm with you through the flood. Huh? I'm with you through the fire. He said, I'm in the midst of it. But see, that's all right. Y'all can get rid of me tonight. I, I was wondering why it was going on. I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't really put it together in my, in my mind. But see, what I'm doing tonight is helping Jerry Spells. Not Ella Spells, but Jerry Spells. It's helping me. I need this for me tonight. Y'all just happen to be in there. Amen? Amen. Because he already got this laid out. And I got to believe that no matter what comes, I will let nothing separate me. I ain't worried about him going nowhere. But I can't let nothing separate me from him. Not the wife. Not the children. Not the grandchildren, not the business, not the land, not the houses. Because I remember I wouldn't have none of that if it was not for him. And he ain't mine now. He just put me a steward over it. Amen? Amen. But when you, when, when you got that spirit, I'm just say right spirit. When I say right spirit, y'all know I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. When you got that right spirit in it, that right spirit, he, 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 he loves himself. And, and, and the reason I, I, I say that because with the right spirit, he hungers. Like I said before, he hungers and he yawns. So if you got that spirit in you, the right spirit, then it's always yawning for you. It's yawning, not only for you, but it's yawning for, for the one that, that sent it. He said, when I leave here, I'm going to leave you a, a, a comforter. I'm going to leave you a counselor. I'm going to leave you a guy. So how, when he's going to leave, his drawing all the time. When, when it draw you, then he can talk to you. He can talk to you. He can say, hey. You know that wasn't right. But if that spirit ain't in you, you're going to bulldoze it right on through because you want to do it what? Your way. 
and it won't work. Somebody say it'll go up for a while, but it won't stay up. But we God. It will go up, and not only will it go up, but he said it'll soar like an eagle. So anything that we're going through, good God of anything that we're going through is a test. It's a test. Remember that it's already been ordained, predestined for you, life laid out for you, and all you have to do is just go along with whatever the program is in God. I better change that in God. Just don't go along with the program. The program is in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's where the program starts. God is the husband. He's the root. Oh, he's the root, and he's the tree, and he's the branches. We are just the leaves on the tree. Amen? Amen? We're just the leaves on the tree. So I wouldn't let nothing separate me from the love of God. Amen? Amen. I'm a, I'm a, I got a different Bible here tonight, and uh, I'm going to read through it. If y'all don't mind. I'm going to read through it. And it's going to hit Romans 8. You get in your, get your book and you can, you make it and follow it along with it. But it reads a little bit different. But I want to do that tonight. After what we've been said about I'll never let nothing, 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 nothing separate me from But it, even if you do, listen here now. Even if you do get separated, he tells me in his word, he said, look, when you stumble or fall, he said, don't wallow. He said, get up. If a horse stole you, you're going you to lay on the ground and holler, you're going to jump back on him and ride him anyhow. Come on, somebody. In other words, he said, get back up. And whatever you was doing, keep on doing it. Because we'll stumble and we'll fall. If you don't think you're stumbling and fall, some in here just as old as me. And I believe they can tell you we have stumbled and we have fallen. Amen? All right. We're going to start Romans Eight chapter. I'm just going to start it. And it said, with the arrival of Jesus, the Messiah, the fake, fateful dilemma is resolved. Those who enter into Christ being here for us no longer have to live under a contentious, low-lying black cloud. When God comes. When he show up. They tell me that he brought me out of darkness, where at? Into the marvelous light. Amen? A new power, oper a new power is in operation. The spirit of life in Christ is like a strong wind has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you from the fatal lifetime of brutal triumph at the hands of sin and death. In other words, he, he said, the word says that he who is set free is free indeed. Amen? When he comes, when that right spirit comes, <laughs> it sets you free. It sets you free. God went, God went for the juggler when he sent his own son. He did not deal with the problem as something remote or unimportant. In his son, Jesus, he personally took on the human condition, entered the disorder mess of struggling humanity in order to set it right once and for all. Good God Almighty. He loved us. Didn't, didn't he love us? The, oh, his only son. His only son. He, de he, de he, he let his own son be crucified for us, for us. But he's going to tell you something else on, down the, on the line. Because I, 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 I have to think about it. If I had to, to, to give up one of my children or one of my uh, 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 mom, or, you know, I, I, have to, I have to be. Wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, and all that. Amen? I have to be. 
All right? The law code weakened as it always was by the fractured human nature. Talking about the laws now, the Ten Commandments. Could never have done that. The commandments couldn't do that, just law. But when he tore that veil and he, he became a spirit within us, within us, then he had it. He could clean it. Man got a chance to be cleaned up. He got a chance to be reborn. He got a chance to be regenerated. Amen? This is all, this is all talking about I will let nothing for, for what he going through and what he, he went through in order that we could have life and have it more abundantly. We have no reason not to love him. We have no reason not to separate from him. Amen? Amen. All right. The law always end up being used as a band-aid on sin instead of a deep healing, instead of a deep healing of it. The law, the commandment. It's got to be in your heart. The law is the law. It's rope. It was rope. But the law, but you got to have something to help you with the law. You got to have something to help you with it. The spirit, the right spirit in you helps you live them laws. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go. And now, what the law code asked for, but we could not deliver is accomplished as we, instead of redoubling our own efforts, simply embrace what the Spirit is doing in us. Then I, then I tell you, we get when things get to going for us, and I, I, there was an incident one time in my life. I wanted to do something, and I learned that. I wanted it so bad, and I wanted to do it so bad. That is something, you know, I wanted to do it so bad, but I, I went on and done it, but it wasn't nothing that he wanted me to do. I done it. So I double, you know, he said, I double up on my effort. I double up. I'm, I'm going to get this done, come, come this or come that. I'm going to get this done. And it was a mistake. All because the right spirit was not working in me. Because if it had been, then I'd have done just what it said right here. I'd have let God do what God do. Amen? Is this, this doing anybody any good tonight beside me? Huh? Is it doing anybody? Okay. Those who think they can do it in their own in their own, end up assessed with measuring their own moral muscle, but never getting around to exercising. Exercising it in real life. You won't get around to it. When you're trying to do it on your own, because he done told you, what he, what he said over there, uh, 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 is it Matthew? Uh, 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 you can't do nothing. And less than I abide in you and you abide in me. Ain't that, that over there somewhere? Huh? You can't do nothing. So why do we? Because we don't have the right spirit. We don't have the right spirit. That's it. That's it. All right. Those who trust God's action in them find that God's spirit is in them, living and breathing God. Huh? A session with self in these matters is a dead end. Selfishness. Don't want to hear what God got to say. I'm, 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 I'm going to do this on my own. Going to do it on my own. I remember I used, when I used to, I never was an alcoholic, but I drank a little bit. And I get, when I did drink, I drunk. And when I get, when I go home, I be crawling around on the floor in the house, and I'm hurting. And, and, and sick to the stomach. And I say, Lord, if you help me up this hill, I'll get over the next one by myself. But then I found out something. 
When I got to the other hill, I still needed him to help me. Ain't that something? But you saw that, let me know. I can't do nothing by myself. I can't do nothing. You can't do nothing. Hallelujah. Assess with self in these matters is a dead end. Attention to God lead us out into the open, into a spacious, free life. Focus on itself, focusing, focusing on the self on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God and end up thinking more about self than God. The person that know that that person or knows who God is and what he is doing, and God is not pleased at being ignored. Ain't that something? Did y'all get that? Ain't that God that you know? When we think of self, how many have ever been been selfish in the life? <laughs> it's just selfish. I am. I am. I just use me because I can talk about me. I can talk about me. I've been selfish. I've been in so full, so selfish that that it, it was my way or the highway. That's how selfish I've been. I thank God tonight, y'all. God done something for me. I don't like to use this word, but I was one fool back in the day. I, was, I thought I was doing something. I thought I was doing something. And I was. I was making a fool out of myself. Amen? I, was, I, I done that. Because I was telling me now, and then when you ignore him, good God Almighty. That's why he says it in words, say, when you, when, you, when, you, when you call me, I won't answer. <laughs> That's why I'd be, I'd be asking, Lord, don't turn your face away from me. Huh? I ignored him, now I want him to be all, all of this for me. Amen? I be wanting him to be all of that for me, but I the one done it first. Because I already knew. Well, I didn't know then. I didn't know then because I'm going to tell y'all one time I did play church. Amen? But if God himself had taken up this down around about the ninth verse in the ninth verse, but if God himself had taken up residence in your life, you can, hardly be, you can hardly be thinking more of yourself than of him. Anyone, of course, who has not welcomed this invisible but clearly present God, the spirit of Christ won't know what we are talking about. But for you who welcome him in, whom he, whom he dwells, even though you still experience all the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. Good God Almighty. On his terms. When he take up residence. When he suit with you. When you done submitted. When you done committed. And you all him. You all him. You don't think about you don't you that when you when he get, when he come in, there's a I, there's a scripture in in, in there. Can't can't think about where, uh, but it says you don't think of yourself all the time about yourself. The word says you think on somebody else's affairs. Did anybody ever read that? You think on somebody's. So when you think on somebody else's affairs, that moves you out of the way. So you ain't selfish. You're thinking about what somebody else is going through, how they're going through. See, that's that right spirit then. You got that right spirit then when, you, when you're doing that. Amen. We only got a few more moments and we're going to get it. <clears throat> Even though you still experience all the limitations of sin, because sin is always around, you yourself experience life on God's turn. It stands to reason does it does does it that if y'all have that if the the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, 
He do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. Somebody say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. With his spirit living in you, your body will be alive as Christ, as Christ with him living in you. Glory to God. Woo, that's awesome. So don't you, this is about the 12, 14 verse now. It says, so don't you see that we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent. There's nothing in it for us, nothing at all. The best thing to do is give it a decent burial and get on with your new life. God's spirit, what, beckons. There are things to do and places to go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Who got somewhere to go tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Who got something to say, I want a close to walk with thee. Hallelujah. Draw near to God. Why, why, why he's near. Huh? Draw near to him. Is he draw near to you? Hallelujah tonight. Glory to your name. All right. 16, 15, 17 said it. This resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, is not timid, a grave tending life. It is venturously expecting, greeting God with a child, with a child like, what's next, Pop, Papa? God's spirit touches our spirit and confirms that really, who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are. Do you know? Do you know? You know who he is, and you know who you are. Amen? No, y'all can't, y'all can't. Y'all can't hear me? Y'all can't hear me now. Okay. I want you to hear me now. God's spirit touches our spirit and confirms who we really are. We know who he is. I know you, Jesus. And we know who we are. Say, I'm yours, Lord. Father and children. And we know we are going to get what's coming to us. An unbelievable inheritance. Do you believe you're going to get what's coming to you? If you live right, do you believe you're going to get it? The song say, if I live right, huh, heaven is who? Heaven is mine. Amen. If we go through the hard times with him, then we certainly is going to go through the good times with him. Hallelujah. He said he who reigns with him, he who suffers with him, what? We'll reign with him. Glory to God. We ain't got just a little bit more. That's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the good and the coming good time. The cre a matter of fact, I'm, this is 18 to, 18 to 21. Everything, everything in creation is being more or less held back. God reigns it in until both creation and all the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment into the glorious times ahead. Meanwhile, the joyful anticipation is deep. Who's excited about God today? Hallelujah. Who's excited about him? God just waiting on him. And he's, when he releases it, oh, my God. 22 and 25 said, all around us, we observe a pregnant creation. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply birth pains. But it only around us. It's within us. The spirit of God is arousing us within. We also feel in the birth pain. These sterile and barren bodies of ours are yawning for full deliverance. That is why waiting does not do with, dim, do with us any more than waiting dim with the pregnant mother. We are enlarged in the waiting. We, of course, don't get what is enlarging in us, but the longer we wait, the larger we become and the more joyful of our expectations. Good God of mine, the longer you wait. See, now, right there, 
Here's one thing that I need to ask God for. I believe God's word. I believe what God says. I believe if I ask him for anything, he'll give it. But right now I need to ask him, Lord, give me some patience. Let me wait. Because sometimes I ask him for things and I'll be, and I'm, I'm just like other people. I, the time I ask him, I'm, I'm looking for it. I'm, 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 I'm looking around to say, Lord, give me some patience. Help me to be able to wait. To wait on you. See, if I wait and know, got joy that I know he going to do it, then when it comes, good God Almighty, do you hear what I'm saying? When it comes, then it'll be a shot in time. It'll be a shot in time. That's the same way he want us to be when, we, when he come. He want us to be expecting him. Ready for him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. All right. 26, 28. This is how it's lined it out. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired, the moment we get tired and waiting, God's spirit is right alongside us, helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it does not matter. He does our praying in and, and for us, making prayers out of worldly sighs and our aching groan. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, know our pregnant condition, and keep us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our life of love for God is worked into something good. All good things come to those that what? Wait on the Lord. All good things. See, I just said that, what I said about God, to ask God to, to help me with my patience, went right down there, and he said the same thing. Because I don't know, sometimes we don't know how to pray or what to pray for, but the Spirit, the Spirit moans, sights, and moans for us in an aching pain. Thank you. Every now and then, somebody should say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right. 29 and 30 said, God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same time as the life of his son. The son stands first in the line of humanity, and he restored. We see the original intended shape of our lives therein. After God made that decision of what it should, should be like, he followed up by calling people by name. And after he called them by name, he set them on a solid base with himself. Then after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he has begun. Lord, finish your work in me. Finish your work in me, Lord God. Hallelujah. Well, right, we about there, y'all. So 31 to 39, this is where I've been wanting to get at. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? Say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. If God did not hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he would, would not gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even to point a finger? The one who died for us, who raised to life for us, it is in the presence of God at this very moment sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between Christ, between us, and Christ's love for us? There's no way. Not trouble, not hard time, not hatred, not hunger, not homeliness, not bullying, bullying threats, 
not backstabbing, not even the worst of sin listed in the scripture. Say, I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. Amen? Amen. I will let nothing separate me from him. And the reason I'm not going to let nothing separate me from him is because he gave me the right spirit. Say, I got it. Say, I got it. I got the right spirit. And I will not let nothing separate me from the love of God. Amen. Oh